Greetings online students. My name is Sharon Down and I'm the course manager for English 101 Online. And a couple of terms back, I made a video showing how to navigate Word to format your papers properly in MLA style. I want to update it now for those of you who are using OneDrive because it looks a little different and working in the cloud can, can create some interesting new problems. So first, to get to the free version of Word that comes with your Gateway student status, you will need to have internet access. Go to the Gateway homepage, you can see that I'm here, and what you're going to want to do is go to your email. So click email here at the top of the screen, and then click go to your email here, and it may have you log in. It will be your um, Blackboard username and password. I'm already logged in because I'm already there. And from here, you'll see that you're in your email. One of the things across the top here is OneDrive. If you don't see it, you'll see three dots up here. If you click on that, it will go to OneDrive for you. Click on OneDrive, and then um, you're in your OneDrive folder. Now this isn't really a folder. It's kind of a space where you can access all the files that you create or upload here. To copy a file from your flash drive or computer out to this space, you would click Upload here and then navigate to your file. This is pretty much like you would do it in an email. So you can choose your files. You just go here and you go and look in your, you can look in your documents folder. You can look on your desktop. Um, maybe you'll see them in a list format or something like that. I can just click one and click open and then here it is. If you click OK, it'll go into your stuff and you'll, you'll either see it or if you um, refresh your screen with whatever browser you're using, you should see it then and you shall have a little green dot here by the side of it. Now at this time what I want to do is create a new document in this um, thing. So I'm going to click on new and one of the options that you see you have is a Word document. We're going to create a Word document and you can already see this is a lot different than earlier versions of Word but don't panic, it's still pretty easy to do everything that you need to do. The first thing that MLA papers need is to be in the right font size and font. So you change that here, you want it to be Times New Roman 12 point. I click down on this to choose and Times New Roman is, an, uh, is one that's pretty recent. You can also go down and use something like Arial or you can scroll all the way down to Times New Roman. I'm going to select that one right now and it also needs to be 12 point font so I'm going to go here and change this to 12. Now the next thing that you need to do um, is double space and you do that here. Just click the line spacing uh, box and click 2 and now you're ready to type your paper. The next thing we need is an MLA header. Now note this is not the header of this or the header space of your document. That's where your page numbers live and that's fine. Maybe you've been taught about that in computer classes. But when we say header for MLA specifically, we're talking about these four lines that appear just on the first page of the paper. Um, the four lines are your name and then your professor's name. I'll put that and then the course name ENG 101 we'll say and then the date. Now for the date you don't use um, slash marks or anything like you need to spell it out so September 2nd is when I'm doing this 2014 and there you go. The next thing that you need is a title that's on the fifth line down and this needs to be centered. So right now we're on the left margin we want to click over here to center it and then you type your cool title goes here. Now one thing about the title to realize with college writing is that you need to actually make it be something that's reflective of the contents of the paper. So not essay one or research paper or assignment five or something like that. Make it be something that's actually a little bit interesting. Um, you click and you also notice that I have not changed the font size. I have not bolded this. I have not put it in um, underlines or italics or um, quotation marks or anything. The only time that you would use italics or quotation marks is if you are referring to a poem or a book or a movie or something like that in your title itself. That piece would get underlined or put in quotation marks depending on what kind of thing it is. Poems get quotation marks. Longer works like operas or movies or books will get the italics. So right now we've got our title. Go down here you notice that I'm still centered and I don't want to be. So I'm going to go back up here and click on the left justify button again and now I'm back on the left margin. So the next thing that you want to do is um, 
hit the tab key to indent your paragraph. You don't just space over a few spaces. It doesn't work well. It may look like it's jumping over pretty far, but that's fine. And then you start typing your paper. And you notice, let me type a bit more here. All right. Notice I did not hit enter, as you can see reading this. Um, this isn't a typewriter, but people who are my age may remember them. And you used to have to, when you got close to the end of a, a page or a line on a page, hit enter to go back to the beginning. You do not have to do that with a computer. So just keep typing and let it wrap. Otherwise, it will mess up your formatting. And then if I want to keep typing, then I would get more things. But notice when I hit enter again, I am indented already. I don't have to hit tab to indent again. It's automatically doing it for you. So that's great. Now the next thing we need to do is get a page number and a name in the actual document header. So what you want to do for that is go up here to insert and you click on page numbers and you get these options. You want to click on the one that has the page number in the top right. When you do that, that will open the header of the document. What you want to do is just type your last name here and hit a space. I might actually spell it right. Hit a space and then you're done. When you get out of the document header, you won't see it up there anymore, but it is there. And if you reopen the document in just a few minutes, you'll see it again. We'll try to do that. Um, finally, you need to name your file. Um, I require a particular naming convention, but um, even if another instructor doesn't, it's always helpful to name your file something that helps you know what the contents are, the name of the class, your name, the assignment name, things like that. You certainly don't want a bunch of document ones that are going to overwrite each other. So if you're doing it in Word Online, as we are right now, you want to click up here, and you see how it turns this color. You can now type a new name. For my classes, I required you put it as last name, your last name rather, and your first name, a dash, the assignment, so SA1 and then dash and then the five digit it's a four or five digit identifying number that you can find in Blackboard this is the class number um, I'll make it be five for this I don't use the section number which is also found there there are things like 9901 99Z2 things like that because they tend to repeat term to term where the um, actual class numbers do not so that's what I do you just hit enter and now it is saved as that Let's go back out to the file list now. I'm going to go use my back arrow here to get out of Word Online. And you'll see this. Eventually, you will see this. Here we go. OK. So what did I just do? Here's my essay that I just created. You can see it's new because I just put it there. So your last name, essay, and all that. Now, if you're looking here, you can rename the file here if you want. Click on these three dots here. It'll let you see if you want to edit, share, or do other things with it. You click these three dots. And now you can edit the properties. One of the properties that you can edit is the file name itself. So if you realize that you got something mistyped or the this is wrong or something, you can change it. And then it's changed there for you. The other thing you can do, see how it's, it's, it's changed. It's a different file now. Um, I click this again. I go down to the dots. The other thing that you can do that's really helpful is download a copy. So if you don't have a copy of your essay, or if you don't have a, a Word on your actual machine that you're working on at home, you can still download a copy of it and have it on your desktop or in your, um, in your downloaded folder. And you can use that to upload it to Blackboard. And I'll do another video to show people how to do that. So at this point, um, I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact either me or your instructor for your class. And uh, good luck with your college writing assignments.